Hello, welcome back. As I told you in the last lesson, I want to do product rule today and list the formula for you and talk about the uh, handout. Again, I might use this method or that method or that method depending upon the question. I don't think they will ever ask you this formula. I have never come across, except perhaps in India in first year BSc. I'm not too sure. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so I want to go over this. If y equal to u v, where u is a u and v, sorry, where u and v are functions of x. Very important. You can't have a t and p and q functions of x. Then show using first principles that d over dx of u v equal to u dv by dx plus v du by dx. Aha. And you, does that ring a bell? Fg, some teachers teach us Fg, so Fg dash plus Gf dash. Same thing, uv dash plus v, u dash. But the assumption there is, whenever you use this formula, u and v must be functions of x. Later on, uh, further math students, you might have something like x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. When you differentiate 2xy using product rule, 2xy squared, let's say x squared y cube. Your u is 2x squared, where v is y cube is a function of y. So you might have to use implicit differentiation. That I'll take it up with further math. Uh, people doing just A level math don't have to worry about it. I have to prove this formula. I mean, I'm in a space. So what I will do will be, you've seen this formula, yeah? I'll just write this here x y is equal to look u is a function of x so can i say u x okay u v where your functions of x and i must show dy by dx equal to u dv by dx plus v du by dx what do you understand by f of x plus h that means you are increasing the value of x by a small quantity h. Instead, I, I, that's why I want to take this so that you know you get used to all the three definitions. So let x become x plus delta x. Then y becomes when x changes by a small quantity, y will also change by a small quantity u will also change by a small quantity, v will also change by a small quantity. Yeah. The difference is y is a function of x, y is y itself because we are going to use dy by dx, whereas this u and v are functions of x. So, how do you find delta y? Look, y equal to u v. So, delta y is u plus delta u times v plus delta v. Correct? That will be what? u v plus u delta v plus v delta u plus delta u delta v. Remember the definition of dy by dx? Rate of change of y with respect to x. Perfect. But for infinitesimally small changes in x. That means delta x is very, 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 maybe is smaller than 10 power minus 43. No, no, side group 10 power minus, is smaller than 10 power minus 87, yes. Smaller than 10 power 3000 minus 3400, yes. But is it zero? No. As small as you please or as my mass professor used to put it, smaller than the smallest x you can think of. Okay. If that is the case, change in x is very, very small. 
change in u is very 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 small change in v is also very very small so the product delta u delta v is very small so you can ignore it now what is delta y by delta x will be u delta v ah sorry 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 this is y plus delta y so what is delta y delta y will be y plus delta y minus y that means this rubbish i am sorry this work u v plus u delta v plus v delta u minus u v because i have already ignored that the u v's can be cancelled the y's can be cancelled so i get delta y so what is delta y by delta x this by delta x can you say u delta v by delta x plus v delta u by delta x right so that's what i have come to which of course i will leave it to you to figure out using f of x plus h and f of x so what is limit delta y by delta x as delta x tends to zero will be u has no change there so limit delta v by delta x as delta x tends to zero plus v times limit delta u by delta x as delta x tends to zero limit delta y by delta x as delta x tends to zero is dy by dx equal to using the same analogy limit delta u by delta x as delta x tends to zero is du by dx limit delta v by delta x and delta delta x tends to zero is dv by dx so that is u times dv by dx plus v times du by dx that is how you get the product rule but as i told you you don't have to prove them unless you are asked to but you can use the definition later on i'll come back to this delta u dy by dx and limit delta x tends to zero because I need it when I do questions on small changes. Okay, and I also talk to you about dy by dx is the rate of change of x with respect to y, sorry of y with respect to x for small changes in x or instantaneous changes in x. For that, again, I will come back to that when I do rates of change. We will come back to that when we do differential equations. So, you need to remember dy by dx. Uh, what is dy by dx? I don't know. No, dy by dx is rate of change of y with respect to x, but for very small changes or instantaneous changes or infinitesimally small changes in x. Okay. Now, as so we have done first principles, and in my handout, what I have done is I have proved. A typical question that might come in an examination, especially in uh, OCR and then AQA, may not be in Edexcel. I'm not too sure. It can come in Edexcel, but not very popular among Edexcels. And I think I have Edexcel examiners. But I have listed all the formula which are supposed to know, and I've done something. I put it as a table. And I left the last column remarks blank. There I mentioned, so I'm recollecting and telling you, please compare the list. You download the list in the video attached, sorry, in the document attached to the video on uh, differentiation by first principles. And then once you download, please either keep it, uh, keep a digital copy or Take a paper copy. Paper copy would be easier, so you don't have to keep reference to the file. And then get the formula book from if you're doing OCR from OCR board. If you're doing Edexcel from Edexcel website. If you're doing AQA from AQA website. Look at the formula that are given in the formula book, and then in the remarks column, given 
given, 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 given if you write, you will see that there are some formula which you don't see in your formula book. That means those formula you have to remember. So that will help you to remember. So anytime you do the exam or anytime you do practice or anytime you do revision, you try, you will remember, oh, this formula I should know. Okay. So those formula are, of course, I'll put y and then dy by dx. So I'll put constant k, only constant gives you zero because y is a constant. So common sense, rate of change, a constant doesn't change. So change in y is zero. So derivative is zero. But suppose you have k f of x or k y, meaning you have a like 2x squared or 2 times x plus 1 or 2x plus 3. You have 2 times x plus 3. A constant and a function of x, then the constant remains there only and you find the derivative. Of course, I'll take a lots, I'll take lots of examples to show this. Then x power n is n x power n. Don't have to copy this. It's in the handout. Then sin x gives you cos x. Cos x gives you minus sin x. Tan x gives you sex squared x. I will show you how to prove this. Cot x gives you minus cos x squared x and then uh, sec x gives you sec x tan x. Remember all these are in radians and cos x equal gives you minus cos x cot x. Later on when we do integration, I will show you how you can exploit these to do for questions in integration. And these are the things which I need to prove this. e power x gives you e power x ln x gives you 1 over x. Of course, x not x is greater than 0. This one may not be in the formula book. a power x gives you a power x ln a. I will prove that later. And the 3-4 three, three, rules. y equal to uv dy by dx equal to u dv by dx plus v du by dx. If y is equal to u over v, dy by dx is equal to v squared v du by dx minus u dv by dx. I think in edXL it is f over g is uh, uh, g f dash minus f g dash over g squared or something like that. And then if y is a function of t, x is a function of t, then chain rule dy by dx equal to dy by dt times dt by dx. In the formula book, you have implicit differentiation as well. I don't want to write it here. I will take it up separately. Don't have to copy this formula. At least look at this once and then look at the handout. And from next lesson, please, as I told you, if I keep on writing the formula for every lesson, I think I'll spend more time writing the formula than doing examples. So I will just quote men verbally and write down, you refer to the formula sheet from the formula book or from your notebook or a digital document on the side. I would suggest print and keep a copy. Unlike trigonometry where you have to make your own, here you've got a ready-made one, you just have to print it and keep it. Well, that's up to you, but if you remember them and you think, ah, I know all the formula, I don't need to. No problem. I'll spend the next two, three lessons doing extensive work on how to apply this and also <coughs> talk to you about chain rule, a shortcut for a function of a function, as we will see in the next lesson. Bye bye. See you. Hello. I want to take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks. I would like to thank Vivid Innovations Private Limited and Commerce Forum 
for uh, so generously giving up their uh, studio and the facilities and the services of their uh, technicians to record all these videos for free. I think that needs to be acknowledged and appreciated. Thank you very much. And my special thanks to Mr. Nitin Mahadevapa, Mr. Nishant Guruswami, and Mr. Sadan Kumar DN for all their help and assistance in getting these videos ready, uploaded, and launched. Thank you very much.